The revenue from ransomware attacks has dropped. In fact, in 2022, it's significantly lower than previously. So in 2022, it looks like ransomware attacks summed up around $456 million uh, in, in revenue for the threat actors. That's down 40% from 2021, where there were $765.6 million uh, paid out from ransoms. Now that's according to chain analysis as reported in dark reading. But what this tells us is that ransomware is on a decline. And what are the reasons? So there are three main reasons that there is well, more than that, but three main reasons that there are uh, slowdowns in attacks. One is is the ransomware uh, threat actors have, have kind of had some some curveballs thrown in their organizations uh, with our evil with Conti. Large attack groups have had to reorganize things like that uh, after geopolitical problems with Russia and Ukraine, etc. It has affected those organizations. Uh, the second thing is sanctions by OFAC and other organizations, as well as uh, insurance standards uh, regarding payment and regarding uh, more stringent policies. And the third is just uh, increased resilience of companies. So companies are spending more time on resilience and security and, and putting in place backups that they can recover from, whether they're cloud copy offsite backups, but some kind of air gapped uh, backup solution that is protected from right, so that they can't be encrypted by the attacker. So these three things together have really changed how ransomware is affecting us. With the more stringent insurance policies requiring more controls, that is is forcing customers to invest in cybersecurity tooling, in EDR, in MDR solutions. It's forcing people to invest in in backups and things like that, and cloud backup solutions. There are a ton of of controls that are now required when you do a cyber insurance renewal, and. I think one of the things that people kind of overlook is those controls, although they seem painful at the time, I know I've had a lot of customers come to me about uh, their cyber insurance renewals have, and have asked me, hey, can you help me with this form? And, and then why are they making us do this? There's It gets bigger every year and we're always having to spend more money on protections. Well, that's because people have been getting attacked and the insurance companies have been having to pay out. So they're doing that to reduce their risk. But it's also reducing your risk. And by reducing your risk, you have a lower chance of having to suffer because of ransomware. So I always say where there's a will, there's a way. The attacker can always get in and cause some damage. But if you have the layered in controls, the defense in depth approach that really is required by most cyber insurance, including a resilient strategy, which gives you immutable backups, offsite backups, things like that, then you won't have to pay a ransom. That's it, that's it. Now, what about companies that are just refusing to pay a ransom now? Whether it's because of sanctions or because of, you know, ethics or, or whatever reason, refusing a ransom Usually, that that decision is made by your uh, ability to recover. So companies that have more resilience now because of these increased controls now are able to recover. So, so as a result, they don't have to pay the ransom. So that investment in resilience is saving the insurance company's money and saving the insured money by, by having a more affordable policy, having a, a, a lower amount of risk, 
uh, lower breach risk, et cetera. So to sum this up, those resilience investments are worthwhile. There's a lot of investment that companies still need to make in more of a zero trust approach, implementing segmentation, implementing things like that so that there's a lower blast radius when you do get attacked. But if you have a good backup strategy and a good recovery strategy in place, even if you get nailed with ransomware, you can recover. And yes, there will be, if you don't have any other security controls preventing it from happening, and the attacker is fully successful in exfiltrating your data, there will be fines. There will be, you know, notification required and stuff like that. However, you'll be able to get back up and running. So that that, that pivots insurance from um, having to rebuild your organization to only focusing on the legal aspect of handling customer notification and, you know, working with your cyber legal firm to bring it up a notification firm etc to notify customers so that total revenue uh falling by 300 million dollars shows that there is a uh a, a lot of change that has happened and a lot of improvement by people as a result of ransomware if you're a company and you don't understand ransomware uh it's it's your competitors are are improving themselves right now. And if you don't understand it enough to improve yourself around ransomware, you're still a potential victim. Now, threat actors are going to pivot. They're going to change what they do as a result of this. They're going to uh, focus on other kinds of attacks that may not require resilience, that may be more of an embarrassment to you or things like that. But for the time being, the decrease in payouts of ransomware, that means that we are, uh, because we're not paying the ransom, that means that we as a country, as a world, are finally understanding how to become more resilient. And that makes me happy. Thanks.